Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Project Hospital, where hospitalisation is now up and running over here in internal medicine, and it seems to be working quite well, it's ticking over quite nicely indeed. I suspect at some point we might have to invest in a few more beds, because over here on the main ward we've only got four beds, and it looks like three of those are occupied, and then in high dependency we've only got three beds, and it looks like two of those are occupied, so I suspect at some point we're going to have quite a few people requiring beds, so we're going to have to spend some money on that. The only problem is our funds are once again not looking very good at all. We've got just over $10,000 right now and our funds weren't helped by another virus outbreak last time out and I think we need to sort that because they do hit us quite hard and it takes a good number of days to actually get over the impact of a virus outbreak. It takes a while to get your patient numbers back up and prestige back up and all that kind of stuff so it is becoming a bit of a nuisance shall we say. So I think let's hire some more nurses to transport patients around. I think what we might need is we might need another maybe two nurses down in emergency who are dedicated to patient transport and then another one up in the infectious diseases department. I think that should be okay. I mean it might not alleviate the problem entirely but it will certainly help out quite a bit. So here we go. Let's get some people on board. I think, I mean we're looking at infectious diseases. Let's go and get that sorted shall we? Have we got a spare, a spare place for somebody to sit. There we go. Yes, we have. Wonderful. So over here, look, we can get, I mean, yeah, this is the question though, isn't it? Do we do a daytime nurse and a nighttime nurse dedicated to patient transport? Because at the moment, yeah, we've got one person on the day shift just transporting patients and then that person. So hang on, who does the day shift? So Zaron does the day shift and then at night, Slim Chicky Man takes over. So we've got at least one person doing the stuff, but if we want to try and alleviate this problem in its entirety, I think maybe another pairing might be quite good. So somebody again on the day shift and on the night shift, I think it might be quite helpful. Although, although, do we need, maybe if we just get another, if we just get regular nurses, they can go and see the patients and they can also then do some patient transfers as well. Hang on, hang on. Am I overthinking this? We've got quite a lot of patients over here. Quite a lot of patients. Do we maybe put another table in here, get another table in here, and then have even more nurses in infectious diseases? It's probably worth the effort, I think, to offset yeah, the losses we have when we actually get a virus outbreak. It might well be worth the effort. Okay, hang on a second, hang on. Complete change of plans. Um, Can we, in here, fit in... Oh, crikey, it's going to be a bit of a push, isn't it? Where could it possibly go? Hang on a minute. Want to get a table. Um, yeah, click into there. Want a glass desk. Um, I mean, could it go... Could it go there? I think we can't put it there because it's going to get in the way of the drink trolley things. Unless, hang on. Hang on. Could we... No, 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 that's a thing on the wall. Hang on. Move the drinks trolley things. So move one just there. And then move one just there. And then can we then get the glass desk... Pop that in just there, and that should be okay. Hang on, rotate it round so we can see a bit better. I think that's okay. I think that will do the job. We might need to move where they grab their scrubs. We might need to move those, because that's now not in a convenient place. So hang on, put those again over the... Hang on, hang on. Weren't they over the thing before? Oh no, hang on, it needs to be the right way around. That would help, wouldn't it, Penge? That would help if they were facing the wall. Right, there we go. Um... Okay, hang on a minute. What chairs have they got? What colour chairs have they got? White chairs. Okay, that's fine. We can we can deal with that. That's okay. Just had to check what colour chairs they had. Want to be consistent. So, um, yeah, we'll have a chair there and a chair there. Thank you. And then we should have some PC. So, boop and boop. Okay, we can now get quite a lot more people in. So, here we go. Let's go and get some people that are just doing patient transfer. So, again, they can go down in this corner. They can have the special desk over here. So, here we go. We don't need all these amazing people. We might possibly want... Hang on, hang on. Jennifer Robinson, you can join the regular team because you are actually quite good. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, you're hiding something from us, which is a bit of a shame. In fact, all these people are pretty good. Let's spend... I know we haven't got much money, but I think we have to do this. So here we go. Spend a bit of money. Um, Jennifer Robinson is a germaphobe. You wash your hands quite a lot. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm fully on board with washing your hands a lot in a hospital. That makes sense. So yes, we'll have you on the day shift, just doing all the regular stuff. So patient care and patient transfers, that's good. And then down here, so we've got somebody here, Brooke Miller, patient care 17%, and then no other skills. And you like working in the day 
and you're a slow learner. But if your sole job is to move people around the place, we'd like you to do that very important job. And you're going to be doing that a lot. You'll pick up skills anyway. It's fine, Brooke Camilla. So I think, yeah, we'll get you in, please. And then we'll switch off patient care. So you can now just move people about. And then over here, I'm very tempted to get Kate Baker, but we don't know Kate Baker's, Kate Baker's um, sort of other traits there. That could be a bit of a problem. Um, Jane Lewis is possibly, I was going to say a bit overqualified to do patient transfers, but they've only got patient care 11% and clinical nurse specialist 10%. So maybe we could get you in. You're a very expensive person to, um, to push trolleys around. Do you know what? Carol Taylor, you can come in on the night shift. You live a bit far away, so you might be late, but there is somebody else also doing patient transfers. So it's not like you're the only person. So in you go. And then again, take off patient care. So there we go, look. So they've got, what's that? Now, two people on the day shift, two people on the night shift, specifically doing patient transfers. So if there is a patient downstairs in the emergency sort of uh, room thingamajig who's got a disease that needs to come over here to one of these rooms, we've got now two people who should be able to go and get them pretty sharpish, I would like to think. And then do we get another nighttime person in? Um... Do you know what? Possibly not, actually. Possibly not. Hang on. Can we click on that and see who we can get? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's some half-decent people. Right. So, yeah, we want them to be clinical nurse specialists. Um, I mean, is it worth it? The night shift here is relatively quiet, I think, because, you know, most people are asleep. And I think the two who are on the night shift can deal with that. I think they should be able to deal with it. Um, do you know what? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I think we'll leave it at that. So there we go. So we've got, what, three people now. So we've got the two people on trolley duties and then the one person just doing regular nursing stuff. And of course, three more people means three more spins. Say it with me, everybody, on the Wheel of Names. Okay, there we go. The Wheel of Names has done its thing again. And we can now welcome to the day shift on trolley duty... DTRUTH313RD. And I will admit, I'm not entirely sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, because that doesn't sound like a name that you kind of go for. I think maybe the 313 is supposed to represent sort of letters. So threes are often E, aren't they? Three is often representing an E, and then a one is sometimes an L or maybe an I, possibly. So is it DTRUTH ALERD? DTRUTH ALERD. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I do apologise for not entirely understanding how to pronounce your name. But whatever the case, DTRUTH313RD is on the day shift in infectious diseases on trolley duty. And then taking over the night shift, we have Genin99 or Genin99 possibly. Again, not 100% sure how to pronounce that one. But there we go. So you're on the night shift, which is very good. And then on the day shift, on regular nursing duties, we have Feather Cap. So there we go. Welcome aboard you three. So that's bolstering all our people up here in infectious diseases but then I also think that we should possibly get some more nurses down in emergency just to again move some more people about the place because I'm not entirely sure who does the moving I don't know is it the infectious diseases nurses that will come down here to emergency and pick up somebody with a disease and take them back to their department or is it the nurses in emergency that take somebody with an infectious disease and pop them up into infectious diseases I'm not entirely sure which way round it is. So I think, yes, we'll get some more nurses down here as well. And it looks like down here in emergency, we've got nobody dedicated to patient transfer. That might be a little bit of a problem. So I think, yeah, let's get... Hang on, we need to do some reshuffling of things. Hang on a second. Um, oh, no. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. Right, hang on. That can go across there. The drinks trolley can go just there. That's fine. Push that to there. The plank can still remain in the corner because that's very important. Right, get another desk. Um, they've got all sorts of multicolour chairs going on in here. So do you know what? Let's keep that going, shall we? Why not? Let's have all sorts of fun things. They will have a red one there. So I've got green, yellow, blue and red. Why not? Eh? Oh, hang on. Is that green because it's in use? It might be green because it's in use. Do you know what? We'll have red anyway. Why not? Makes it look colourful and fun. Um, and then, yes, then we'll have, I don't know, a uh, white chair, and then we'll have a green chair at the end. Because, yeah, it makes it look exciting. I like that. Um, do have to be a bit wary of money here. But I think, yeah, we can afford to do this. Right, there we go. There we go. And now I think what we'll do is we'll definitely get at least one person on the day shift and one person on the night shift just doing patient transfer. So here we go. Who can we get now? Um, Jessica Hernandez has very clean feet. I like that. Oh, Mary Green, however... Oh, Mary Green's really good. 
Mary Green is very good. Do we get Mary Green just employed on the day shift to just do actual proper normal work? I'm, te I'm very tempted. Look at that. Patient care 64%, clinical nurse specialist 42%, and she's an early bird, works better in the day, and she's got shiny clean feet and no other hidden skills. Hidden perks, sorry. So, I tell you what, Mary Green, you can come in. There we go. You can come in and just help out. The desk on the end there, they can be sort of patient transfers. So I think John Green can come in. You can do patient transfers because patient care 22%, no other skills, and you've got clean feet, which is good. I like that. So make sure you're not doing anything. You are just patient transferring. Very important. And then on the night shift, who can we get? Okay. Patricia Martinez is a perfect candidate for somebody who can just do patient transfers. She is hiding three things from us, however, and I'm not entirely happy about that. So let's go for Casey Thomas in instead. You're still pretty good for a patient transfer person. A hard worker, you don't take breaks. So at the end of your shift, you're going to be very tired, but that's okay. So in you come Casey Thomas. And again, don't do patient care. Don't do trauma stabilization because that might make things a little bit difficult because you're not very good at that kind of thing. Um, do we get another person in on the night shift? Do we grab another decent person in on the night shift? Do you know what? Maybe we should, because in emergency, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. You get people coming in all the time, particularly by the flashy lights and Eno machine. So I think maybe let's get Elizabeth Lee in, shall we? They do seem to be quite good. So patient care, 34%, clinical nurse specialist, 37%. That's okay. But they use their free time to study. So they do have a little bit of free time. They'll go and boost their skills a little bit, which is very handy. They're a little bit sort of price on the salary side of things, but I think they will help out quite a bit. So let's pop you in as well. So there we go. We've bolstered our number of nurses down here in emergency, which I think is probably a good thing. And yes, we now do have some dedicated patient transfer people. So hopefully we won't see so many virus outbreak things. So hang on, what have we got now? We've got four people. So yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, so four new people means four more spins on the wheel of names. Okay, there we go. Four more names have been selected. So let's begin with our regular nurses, shall we? So as a regular nurse on the day shift, we now have Sassy Sal. And then as a regular nurse on the night shift, we've got Liam Turner. So welcome aboard you two. And now dealing with only patient transfers on the day shift, we've got BSO. Welcome aboard. And then on the night shift, We've got Spoonface. I love you lovely people out there. You're just so amazing. Look at that. We've got a character in that game called Spoonface, which is just very funny. I don't know why that makes me laugh quite so much, but I do think it's very funny. So there we go. Spoonface is going to be pushing people about on trolleys on the night shift down here in emergency, which I do like quite a lot. So there we go. Four more people have joined us. Our money is now significantly less than it was when we started this video. But there we go. We had to do all that kind of stuff. So now we can get time ticking on because nothing has happened so far. Just been dealing with sort of, you know, hiring people and, you know, going to the wheel of names or what have you. So here we go. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Things haven't started well then. Right. John Jones appears to be a little bit dead. Oh, John, what happened, John? What happened? Um, okay. What did you die of? Renal laceration. Okay. Renal laceration occurs when object pierces the tissue of the body and tears the kidney. I mean, it does sound quite bad. It sounds really bad. Um, okay, available examinations, autopsy. I think, yes, we will go and do an autopsy just to see what happened here. But okay, that's a bit of a shame. John, I'm a bit sad. Okay, hang on. Can we, uh, can we follow you, John? Oh, you were down in intensive care. You were down in the intensive care department anyway. So well, hang on, let's make sure that you get to where you need to go, John, and we'll do it all respectfully and all that kind of stuff. But um, yes, if somebody could move you slightly quicker than this, that'd be nice. Come on, come on, where's, where's the care? We should get somebody coming down here at some point. I'm not entirely sure why it's taking this long. Can somebody please move this chappy? John, John Jones needs to be moved, please. This is all getting a bit silly now. And Nancy Cole might possibly leave. That, that's fine. Nancy, there are there are more important things at work here. We need to move John because I feel a bit sad. And, you know, for the sake of John and John's family, he does need to be moved. I mean, he's waiting for a morgue bed. I mean, really? I, hang on, you're waiting for a blood transfusion. I don't think you need to do that anymore. I think, that's, I think we're kind of beyond that. I think they're not really bothered about that anymore. Okay, let's hope they move John at some point. And Nancy Lee, are they in internal medicine? They're waiting for... They're, they're, ah, they're in the clinic. They haven't been seen by a doctor. 
Okay, that is possibly a little bit of a problem. How many nighttime doctors do we have in internal medicine? How many have we got? Oh, hang on, everything's all a different way around. Where, hang on, where's internal medicine? It's over here, there we go. How many nighttime doctors do we have over here? Um, go to there, go to internal medicine. Um, we've got two. We've got two. Uh, how many people are waiting? Not many people are waiting. I assume that person has been seen now. Hang on, whereabouts are they now? They are down... I don't know what they're doing. Oh, they're waiting down here. They're waiting down here for some sort of blood test results or whatever. Um, okay, that's never ideal. Now, somebody did say that we should build another blood lab. And I went, really? We've already got two of them. Look, two here. And then, in fact, we've got a third one up in infectious diseases, haven't we? But um, they did so. Yes, I've got up to ten, I think it was. And I did think we could possibly make use of that space in the corner. So maybe we have a corridor kind of running around here a bit. So maybe just even to just there, possibly. And then we could have ourselves a bathroom up here because we do need a bathroom in this corner of the hospital because the nearest bathroom is quite a long way away from these beds here. So a bathroom would be quite useful. And then we could have another blood lab because I feel like that would be a very useful thing to have up here in this corner. Just, you know, loads of blood labs, loads of clever sciencey people doing blood work because that always does seem to be a bit of a bottleneck. So when we get some money in, whenever that might be, I'm not entirely sure, whenever we get some money in, Yes, we might well put a blood lab up there and a bathroom as well. But here we go. Let's get time ticking on. Oh, hang on. No, hang on. Let's focus over here, look. Um, oh, they got bored of waiting. It's fine. I'm not so fussed. Um, yeah, can we can we see what's going on here? Oh, I know why they're waiting. I know why John Jones is waiting. Because we don't have a night shift on in pathology, do we? We don't have a night shift. Oh, Nancy Lee's going to go home as well. It's fine, Nancy Lee. Um, okay. We're going to get to about 7 o'clock. Our money is going to completely tumble down into oblivion, which is not good. Um, almost $26,000 down. Yay! <laughs> okay. However, how are we looking on the whole prestige side of things? And get time moving on a bit. Um, so patient intake, 71%. Insurance payments, up to 100% again, which is quite good. So, okay. I think maybe by the end of today... If we manage to you know, get some good treatments going on and avoid any kind of contagion shenanigans again, we should be able to get patient to take back up to quite a lot. Insurance payments up as well. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, right. Another event has popped up. Okay, we, we had to wait quite a long time between the previous ones. An explosion followed by a fire has been reported in a local power plant. Crikey's... <laughs> <laughs> I would say that there's a bit of a problem at the local power plant. I would say that, um, yes, they're not quite properly equipped to uh, handle, you know, dealing with power things because this is a second explosion that's happened. Um, okay, so we can accept this or we can accept and take over all patients. And previously, on the previous events we've had, we just accepted and go, there we go, our staff will deal with it. But quite a lot of people in the comments did say, when this happens, you should accept and take over all the patients. The other thing is, we've not really done that before. So here we go. It's a bit of a leap into the unknown. Let's see what we do here. So accept and take over all the patients. Stop time for a second. Okay. So we've got, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, seven people. We've got seven people. But if we do this, we complete that goal. And then we unlock event buzz. Okay, we've got quite a long time to do this as well. There's a 24-minute timer on this. Um, so at the moment, nobody's in. So we can't do anything right now. We can't do anything at the moment. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> right. Frank White. I've got to juggle many things. Frank White needs a bed over in internal medicine. And we don't have any spare beds, it seems. Um... Okay, can we do some more creative bed borrowing from places? Hang on a second, pause time. <laughs> this is all fine. Um, there's a bed. Do you know what? There's a bed there. Why don't we just borrow on a temporary basis that bed and just pick that up and put it over here for now? Just yeah, on a sort of a loan, if you like. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll buy you another one back. It's fine. It's fine over. You're not using these beds. So we'll grab that and pop that over. Um, and again, we want the um, the thing, whatever it is, the bed, the thing that goes behind them, the socket thingamajig. We'll have that as... That didn't pick that up, did it? It didn't pick it up at all. Nope, hang on a minute. Can we pick it up? Hey, there we go. Well done. Right, so pop that over there. Right, so now hopefully that person can now 
go into that bed. Okay, so we can put, uh, hang on, is it regular hospitalization? Hang on a minute, press that button. Uh, can we see why they're not doing that? Why is that not moving out of the way? Ah, hospitalized, transported to him. So already it's happened. Okay, right, there you go, Frank White. Okay, we need to keep an eye on these people. Um, that is not how you speed time up in this game. Keep pressing one, two, and three. So currently nobody's here. Right, here we go. Peter Jones has arrived. Um, he's in emergency. He's undergoing stabilization. Oh, this, this is going to be very busy in here. <laughs> we need to get these people out of here pretty much immediately. Okay, oh, look. Are you a firefighter? Yes, you are a firefighter. Ah, okay, right, so, schedule procedures are finished. That's for stabilisation. The patient is waiting for you to plan another examination or select a diagnosis. Oh, no. Have we got to do this to everybody? Oh, no, I don't know. This, <laughs> this person is reporting pain. It's a bit generic, isn't it? I mean, maybe a physical examination might help quite a bit with that. Just, you know, I mean, where is the pain? In your head? In your arm? Uh, that would be really helpful. They're the only person in. Oh, here we go. So Elizabeth Martinez has a chemical burn of an arm. Okay. So let's see what's happening there. Right. So they've done a physical examination on this chappy. He's either got a microwave burn or a high voltage burn. How do we identify <laughs> burns? I'm not entirely sure how we do that. Um, differential diagnosis. Doctor is not qualified to prescribe. Um, a chest thing. That's not going to help, I don't think. I mean, how exactly do we... How do we determine the difference between a microwave burn and a high-voltage burn? I'm not entirely sure. Peter Jones, why are you still in some microwaves at the time? Because that would help quite a bit. Um, okay, okay, right, hang on, hang on. There must be one of these options here which allows us to kind of figure out what the difference is between these burns. I genuinely don't know which of these examinations will help us determine what type of burn they've got. I don't know. None of these seem to help. I mean, drawing blood isn't going to help. Having a sample of we isn't going to help either. Biopsy? I mean, do you do a biopsy of their skin? Take a bit of the burnt skin to see what's happening there? An MRI isn't going to help because that kind of sees through you. It's got to be sort of analysis of what's directly there. So I think what we might need to do is we might possibly need to switch you round in terms of doctors. So we might need to say move you to a different doctor possibly who's got differential diagnosis. Can we change your doctor? Has a Canther Oak Moon got that? Uh, yes, okay, right. So a Canther Oak Moon, you might be quite busy. So can you please do some differential diagnosis on this person? Right, okay. So now more people are coming in. So now Elizabeth Martinez has come in. Um, oh, yes, the firefighters. It's the firefighters that have taken a big hit in this emergency. Okay, this is really important. We have to make sure they're okay. Right, Elizabeth Martinez has a chemical burn of the arm. It's, it is known. It is a fact. It's an empirical fact. She probably told us that that's what it is. Okay, this is good. So what can we do about that? We don't need to do any examinations at all. We need to treat that. So that is burn management. Okay, burn management, please. Go and do that. Whatever you've got to do, go and do that. Manage the burns. And that's quite good. If she gets out of the way nice and quick, that frees up a bed in here. So any other people coming in? Oh, here we go. John Jones has appeared. Sorry, John. I do apologise. It's not good enough. We'll try harder. But yeah, sometimes it, it happens. You can't save them all. It's all very sad. Right, Peter Jones now does have a high voltage burn. Okay, so it was the differential diagnosis thing that helped out with that. So you've got a high voltage burn. That is thoracic trauma surgery. Okay, it says... Not available. Surgery can only be performed at specialised departments. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, we need to move you now, don't we? So you can go into traumatology and then, yes, you can do that and we'll blue light you with that as well. So hopefully they should be able to get you over there nice and quick. It might say, hang on, do we put you in high dependency as well? You might need to go into high dependency to go onto an actual ward so they can do that. Okay, so still only two people in at the moment. Somebody else is coming in. You're a firefighter as well. Um, no, you're just a person. You're an athlete. Okay, uh, hang on. Jennifer Miller. Uh, okay, Jennifer Miller, the athlete, for some reason, hanging around at the power station. <laughs> Why are you there? I would expect firefighters. That makes sense. And possibly, you know, people that work at the power station. Elizabeth Martinez. Um, okay, procedure finished. Burn management. Um, oh, We've done one already. Okay, Elizabeth Martinez. Um, yeah, you're fine. What do we do with you now? Uh, go home? 
<laughs> what do we do with you? I don't, I don't know how to finish this off. Emergency care? Um, hang on, what can we add? No, they've got all these other things as well. So, right, analgesics. Right, so current symptoms. So we've dealt with the chemical burn, but they've still got severe arm pain. So we want to get you some analgesics for the arm pain, some bronchodilators for the breathing. Um, nothing from that. Protective dressing for the darkened skin and the burn wound is emergency care. Okay, so we have to treat all their symptoms. Okay, right. This is making sense. And Chappy here, high voltage burn. Also, yeah, physical examination. Um, hang on a minute. Let's just do the rest of these. So NSAIDs, whatever they are. Um, analgesics, protective dressing. Um, what's necrosis? Debridement. Uh, necrosis is when your skin's getting all dead, isn't it? Oh dear, that's not very good. Burn wound is emergency care. Okay, so you have all of those as well, please. So hopefully, with all those things being applied, they'll get sorted as well. Right, okay, so one person done. There's a tick there. 22 minutes, 56 seconds running, and we've got one person ticked. Okay, so we've got, what, six more people to sort out. One person has been taken away to the right place. Right, Jennifer Miller. You've either got abdominal blast trauma or thoracic blast trauma. I kind of feel like you should be able to tell. Is the blast trauma in the abdomen or is it in the thoracic region? I don't know. Um, they're also unconscious. Okay, hang on a minute. They're unconscious. So I think oxygenotherapy might be quite good and possibly a blood transfusion, given they've got a severe hemorrhage. Um, please treat them with that. Do a physical examination because that should be able to tell you where the damage is. That would make sense quite a bit, I think. Everyone's having a very leisurely stroll about. Okay, Richard Davis has come in. You're also one of our emergency sort of event people. So, okay, hang on a second. Um, okay, you've got a leg injury, severe leg pain, so analgesics. Okay, so analgesics and recommendations to sort out your current symptoms. But then I think, yeah, a physical examination again is going to help quite a bit. So hang on, who is down here? Who's with who? So Acanthrope Community is over there. Then we've got a way her dealing with these two. Okay, right. We'll have to see if that's okay. We'll have to see if that's enough. I'm tempted to bring in another doctor. I'm tempted to get another doctor in, just see if that helps out a bit. But okay, things are looking all right at the minute. So Felix, uh, physical examination is underway for Jennifer Miller. So she's down here. Another person is coming in. The flashy lights and email machines are being very busy. Okay, so um, then we have a teacher. <laughs> so a teacher and an athlete. And hang on a minute. What were you? Uh, an athlete, two athletes, and a teacher caught an explosion at a power plant. Very mysterious. Okay, um, over here, Jessica Scott, a similar thing to the other chappy. So yeah, analgesics for your leg pain and recommendations, that's fine. And um, yeah, physical examination, please. Get that sorted. Uh, okay, Jennifer Miller has finished all these. Right, abdominal blast trauma. Um, you might need emergency care, I suspect. That's gonna be quite helpful. Um, what do we do with that? Thoracic trauma surgery. Okay, so we need to put you into traumatology. Um, okay, I think, uh, hang on a minute. We want them to do, do they need to go into a, oh no, how do we do this? Is the burn, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Is the burn unit full? Is it full over here? That would be unfortunate. <laughs> um, no, it's really empty. Oh, okay. I was kind of thinking that, why can't we put them into a thing? Patient is already hospitalized. Oh, hang on. They're already going over here. Oh, okay, that's fine. Right, you need thoracic trauma surgery. And also possibly, uh, yeah, blast wound is emergency care. That's already being applied. Emergency care, deagle of skins, replantation. So do that as well. Okay, code blue you, because you're in a bad way. Right, okay. So now we go back to here and we go back to waiting for what's going on with the remaining people over here. So I think still, Michael Davis hasn't even come to us yet. He's not even here. So, you know, we've only got this certain amount of time. Michael Davis isn't even in the hospital. Right, okay. Move time on a tiny bit quicker because there is stuff going on here. They're all being treated. It's all looking pretty good. Right, okay. Here comes more people. Right, Elizabeth Martinez. So you've got a chemical burn of the arm. Um, right, you've got... Hang on. 
What's that? The act of coughing up blood, a burn wound is emergency care. Right, you've got all these things down here. Chemical burn of the arm is burn management. I think Elizabeth Martinez. Um, oh, no, hang on. Yeah, you're the one that's cured. Uh, okay. What do we do with you now? <laughs> I don't know what we do with you now. Do, you, do we send you home? Is there a send you home? But send them to another hospital, so department, or code blue them. You're okay. Just hang around for a bit. I don't know. What do we do with you? <laughs> I don't know what we do with you now. You're idle in bed. Do you know what? You've been through quite a serious thing. Just have a little sit down. Right, Michael Davis has arrived. Hello. We don't know what's wrong with you at all. You might have one of many unpleasant things. We're going to switch you to a Canther Oak Moon. Um, do a physical examination. And please do... Oh, crikey, hang on a minute. Please do... Where is it? Differential diagnosis as well. Let's get that sorted. Okay. I quite like doing this. I quite like doing the whole... This is like doctor mode, isn't it? Yeah. So we're doing the doctoring for people. Um, okay. Right. So Richard Davis has got a thermal burn of the leg. Okay, so how do we treat that? Burn management. Okay, so burn management. And then for the redness, nothing. Desquamation. Also known as peeling skin. Oh, <laughs> okay. Protective dressing. Do you know what? Have all of those things down there. Because it looks like you need many, many things to treat your symptoms as well. So you have all of those, please. This is good. This is good. What's evaluation do? I mean, yeah, we know what the diagnosis is. We don't necessarily need that. This room is okay. We've got some bed spare. Um, who's that coming? Is that Jennifer Hill coming in? Is that Jennifer Hill? I think it might be. Yes, because she's the last one to arrive. Okay, so all of the people are now here in the hospital. We don't know what's wrong with Jennifer Hill. I think we could possibly rule some of these out. Given that she was involved in an explosion at a power plant, I think maybe severe frostbite on her hands. It's less likely to be frostbite, isn't it? Or maybe being struck by lightning. I mean, it's more likely to be, you know, thermal burns and uh, you know, chemical burns and such. But OK, um, right. Canther Oak Moon, do a physical examination and then please do where's differential diagnosis. Do that, please. Just try and work that out and give them some analgesics for their severe arm pain. OK, right. So now I've got to wait for everybody to do the things that we need them to do. Do you know what? We need another doctor down here. We need another doctor. It, two doctors in here is not enough, it seems. Um, okay, right, we've got we've got 22 grand. We've got some money, so we can actually buy some stuff. So hang on, move that plant up into the corner. Um, the doctors do have their own fancy desks with printers on because they're show-offs. So we'll keep the same sort of thing. So hang on. So get a, um, uh, yeah, get a brown desk in. We shall get a chair with the yellow thing, a jig like that. And then we'll get a PC and then we'll pop a printer onto the table. You, know, you can have a, a chunky printer. You can have a big printer. OK, and then we need to go to emergency. So, yeah, let's hire another pair of doctors. We have to, I think. So here we go. Who is good at dealing with kind of you know, acute medicine? Um, OK, Frank Garcia has the potential to be quite good. I mean, Daniel White's pretty good. They're not top draw, but they're pretty good. Diagnosis 52%. You've got diagnosis 99%. General medicine 99%. I mean, you've only got advanced diagnosis 2%, but we'll let you off, Frank, because you're pretty good. Um, okay. Let's spend a thousand of our money to reveal the hidden perks. Are they terrible? No. We've got two pretty good people. Okay. So Frank can come in on the day shift. So you've got, yeah, Spartan, your needs are reduced slower, your rest levels decrease slower, and you don't take breaks. You're going to be amazing. So you can join in on the day shift. And then on the night shift, hang on, click that again. Um, hang on, where was the other person? Oh, Daniel White here. So yeah, they're a fast learner. They've got clean feet and they're a good boss. So yeah, Daniel White, you can come in as well. Your stats are pretty good. So yes, there we go. Two more doctors to help us out over here in emergency. That might make things a little bit slicker as well. However, two more people, of course, means two more spins on the wheel of names. Okay, there we go. Two more names have been randomly spun into existence. So on the day shift, we can welcome Regent Nat. Welcome aboard. And then on the night shift, we can welcome just Adam. Nice and simple, just Adam. So there we go. Welcome Regent Nat and Adam. So I think Regent Nat will now run in to help out over here a bit because, yeah, two doctors 
doesn't seem to be enough when we've got five people here in a bit of a bad way. So here we go. Let's get time ticking on. We'll see one person leave, I think. Are they walking in the same place at exactly the same time? Yes, they are, but one's a bit quicker. Um, Adam is going home. He's taking a bit of a leisurely stroll home. And uh, Regent Nat is running in to do some exciting, important doctory stuff. So, OK, let's get time moving on a bit quicker. So now, yeah, we've got multiple people around here now. I mean, ideally, we could do with people that are just dedicated to the trauma centre and some that are just dedicated to looking after people in observation. But it's fine. For now, we've kind of muddled through. So Jessica Scott has a thermal burn of the leg. Okay, so I've got blisters, that needs protective dressing, I've got redness, burn wound is emergency care, and we've got ourselves protective, so we don't need, oh uh, yeah, and burn management is going to be that just there. Okay, so burn management as well. Um, I think we should be okay. So hang on, maybe we should put you over to traumatology and we can get you in over there possibly. We'll see if that's going to work, so hang on. So maybe you can move over there. Yeah, you're being hospitalised, transported to a room. Okay, that's good. So you're being put in the burn unit, which makes sense because, you know, you've got burns and such. Elizabeth Martinez has been cured. Richard Davis has now been cured. Two of the seven have been cured. This is wonderful. Okay, move time on. Um, That terrified me then for a second. I was going to go, no, what's happened? No, John Jones. John Jones is now, um, has, the autopsy's happened. It's all very sad. Um, yeah, okay. So what happened here? So we can now send them to funeral services. Oh, it's there, isn't it? Send the body to funeral services. Farewell, John Jones. Uh, rest in peace. Right, Michael has got lead poisoning. Okay, hang on. Michael Davis. Lead poisoning. Okay. Lead poisoning is a type of metal poisoning caused by the accumulation of lead in the body. You wouldn't get that from explosion. <laughs> Unless he was just casually drinking lead all day or something. That's a little bit weird, isn't it? Um, okay, so you can have analgesics for your headache. You can have beta blockers for your tremors. And you can have NSAIDs, whatever that is, some sort of anti-inflammatory thing for your muscle pain. Um, and then, yes, you need to go to internal medicine. Um, and then have, what is it? Chelation therapy. Okay, let's, um, let's blue light you as well with that one. Um, I think, yeah, it looks like you're okay. Yeah, there's, there's beds and stuff available. It would nag us otherwise. That's quite good. There's a bit of a wait at the pharmacy, is there? Um, there is a bit of a wait at the pharmacy. It does make me think we should employ a third pharmacy person on the day shift. Not on the night shift, because the night shift isn't that busy. But this does clear, but that's quite, you know what? That's quite a lot of people. <laughs> that is many people. Right, we're going to go for it. Here we go. Uh, where is... Where is the pharmacy? Which bit of which bit is the pharmacy? It's um yes, it's the administrative department. Of course, it is. Um, I think yes. Let's get another chair. Um, hang on. There's a green chair and a red chair. Uh, okay. Do you know what? We'll have a different coloured chair then, please. Let's get the lovely officer. Let's have a yellowy one. We'll put that just there, look, and then we'll get to PC. And can we hire another person? I quite like this though. We're sort of, yeah, we're sorting things out. We're making things a little bit more efficient around here. So let's get another person that's quite good at doing pharmacy stuff. Um, okay, all you people are pretty rubbish. 38% is the highest on pharmacy. Um, hang on, how good are these people here? Um, 100%, 100%, 100%. Okay, right. I mean, they have been here a while doing that job, but I feel that maybe the 38% isn't going to cut it. Do you know what? We're going to find some new candidates. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. 39% to 39%ers. And do you know what? We'll go for you. Peter Taylor down here. 39%. Um, your rest levels decrease slower. Yes, we shall have you. And of course, again, another new person, which means we need to go over to the Wheel of Names. And we can welcome Lucian over to the pharmacy. So hopefully Lucian can now help out a bit with the great big Q. So there you go, Lucian. Nope, Lucian's going to stand and stare at these things here. Lucian, Lucian, please attend to some patients. Please do something, Lucian. <laughs> Are you feeling okay, Lucian? Right, hang on a minute, hang on. Maybe we've not done something quite correctly there. Okay, Jennifer Hill, thermal burn of the arm. Okay, that's fine. Right, so you've got severe arm pain. We need to give you some analgesics. Where are, I can't see where they are. Um, 
Hang on. We give... I oh, know you've already got those. Okay, now that's fine. Um, we need recommendations, <laughs> which seems a little bit silly. Um, Desquamation is protective dressing. Um, necrosis is debridement. Eshar, dead tissue in a full thickness wound. Ugh. Okay, steroid cream. And then we need emergency care. And that is burn management. Okay, and then pop you over into there. Okay, so you can go over there. I'm a bit concerned about Lucian here. Performing selling medicine to Christopher Wilson. Oh no, you you decided not to not to um not to sit down. Okay, that's fine. William Miller, are you one of our people over here? No, you're not. Jennifer Miller, you might be related possibly, but you're collapsing from exhaustion. Okay, I think maybe you could possibly muddle through with that one. Um, <laughs> you've collapsed in an unfortunate place, but okay. Is anybody rushing over to save this poor chap? Is anybody bothering to go, yay, there we go. Who's that? Danielle Grace. Of course, Danielle Grace would come over all the way from doing x-rays, running over here. Okay, right. Here we go. We've got to get these uh, these emergency things sorted. Okay, Richard Davis. Uh, ah, okay. Ice wrap. So your thing's been done as well. So you're okay. You can go home. I don't know how we tell you to go home. Maybe you have to stay overnight or something, and then we can tell you to go home at a later point. But okay. This is fine. This is all okay. It's all good. Let's just keep time ticking on. Right, Michael Davis, analgesics. You've had your lead poisoning. Ah, you've been cured. You've been cured as well. This is wonderful. This is going okay. It's going okay. Right, so you can just sort of hang around a bit as well. So three of the seven have now been dealt with. This is very encouraging. Let's just make sure that everybody else is still being seen to. There's still a firefighter over here. Um, oh, hang on. We, but hang on, burn management. Yet yeah, you need to go to, <laughs> you need to go to the place where we deal with the burns. That would help, wouldn't it? You've got thermal burn of the leg. You've got burn management. Yeah, I'm not very good at this. this. Is why I don't do this. Is why I don't do doctor mode. Um, you two go away to where you need to go. And William Miller is not one of these people. William Miller is a chap that just collapsed. Okay, right. So we should now have all of our people over in the right places at least. So we've got 19 minutes left to deal with this. Elizabeth Martinez. Oh, somebody else has been cured as well. This is brilliant. Okay. So the last thing that she had was emergency care. Okay. So she is, yes, she's looking fine as well. So we've only got three more people to cure. Okay. Let's make sure. Right. So now you're being taken to the right place. Along here. Away we go. Into here. Right. So Richard. Oh, the six done. The six done. Maybe we should do this. Maybe when we get an emergency type thing, an event, this is what we should do. It, yeah, I, I, it's okay. I don't mind it. I thought it'd be a bit more sort of faffy and fiddly, but you actually see what the process is of how they do what they need to do and how the doctor's going to assess things and what have you. I quite like this. Okay, so you're sorted. Okay, so Richard Davis. So it's just Jessica Scott. Wherever Jessica Scott might be, whereabouts are you? So hang on a minute. Can we find where you are? Pop you out of the way. Um, right, you're in a bed over there. Okay, so what are you waiting for? You're waiting for just burn management by the look of it. It looks like you're just waiting to heal up a bit, possibly. Um, oh, hang on a minute. They've taken you somewhere. You're being taken along here. You see the burns on your legs, though. You've got a red bit on your leg. Okay, can we put... We've got 17 and a bit minutes to sort this out. This is going to be fine. I think we can... <gasps> We've done it. We've completed an event, everybody. Okay, so we got given five grand. That's very welcome. That is completely amazing because we were looking a little bit sad for monies. So five grand, that's very helpful. And we've completed that objective. And now the event buttons have unlocked. Hang on a second. Hang on a minute. Hang on. We've got ourselves three event buttons. An accident event, an epidemic event, or a natural disaster event. We can summon natural disasters. <laughs> <laughs> let there be earthquakes boom okay wow right that's really good that's very exciting and does that count to anything down here um yes it counts toward one of protect care's goals successfully finish three accident events okay so yeah that was an accident event that we just dealt with there okay so these people are still kind of under our care but it's sort of i mean they can go they can, they can go away now. I think they have to stay overnight, possibly. Okay, right. So, we've got to give them some money for that as well. We've unlocked the next... Oh, hang on, what's the next goal for that? Jessica Scott is now complete. 
Elizabeth Martinez is collapsing from palpitations. Oh, no, that, that's not good. That's not good at all. That needs an IV infusion. Please sort that out. Um, yeah, okay. Please, please, please correct that problem. They'll, they'll save them and sort it out. It's all okay. They know what they're doing. Um, and Jennifer Miller, uh, muscle and skin damage, physical examination. No, you, you're okay. You're okay. Just sort of hang around in bed for a bit. Have a little lie down. It'll be okay. Peter Jones with your high voltage burn. They'll get all these things to you eventually and sort out all those symptoms. Okay. Right. How are things going elsewhere? Oh, Peter Jones is now having a bit of a collapse. Okay. Unconsciousness. Oxygenotherapy, please. <laughs> deary me. Deary, deary me. Um, okay. Your IV infusion thing is sorted. You're now in intensive care, but that's okay. Don't worry. Uh, Dr. Penguin Trider Headstand is looking after you. It's all going to be fine. But yeah, you need all these things applied to you. But the big thing is, yeah, we have completed that. Um, also, what is the next goal for them? So quick snap care, successfully finish one epidemic event. Ah, okay. So their goal thing is now going to be, okay, do an epidemic event, then do like uh, whatever it is, a natural disaster event, then do an accident event. Is that what that's going to be? I mean, we do need to do some epidemic events anyway. We do need to get them done to get happy life's objectives underway. Um, I mean, is it worth now? Hang on. How many people do we get from cheapo care? 17 people paying 80%. We could go to Happy Life and get 10 people pay paying 110%. That doesn't seem that much. I think we keep with the combination of things we have now, but we do need to go through Quick Snap Cares ones because they only send seven people our way, and that's a little bit rubbish. We could do with a lot more people coming in, so we get more money, and then we could do more building and more exciting stuff. So um, here we go. This is all good. Right, you finished doing that thing. Okay, this is good. Hopefully... We can get through to the next day and see we've got some money. Yeah, okay, you're all fine as well. So all our people down here are okay. I think they will pull through, which is good news for us. So I think, yeah, now what's prestige looking like? It's at 109%. Okay, Elizabeth Martinez is having a bit of a collapse. Septic shock. IV antibiotics, please. Please deal with this very quickly. We don't want you to die because that's going to bring everything down. Um, okay, hang on a minute. Your procedure's finished. Okay. Is she okay? Is she fine now? Septic shock is going away, and they're just looking after her. Okay, we have to make sure that when these people pop up, we deal with them. We can't just kind of fob it off, because they might possibly die a bit. But yeah, our prestige at 107%. 109%. Everything is looking amazing. We've got enough money to pay for the day shift wages. And possibly even the night shift wages. I mean, yeah, we're getting toward... No, we can't pay the night shift wage as well. But we're getting toward kind of ending the day shift. So we should be able to see what's going on. William Robinson having a bit of a collapse. We're not controlling you. We're not controlling you. Um, okay. You've got some diseases. None of them are horrifically infectious, though. So, okay, we just have to hope that somebody gets to. Whereabouts are you? Where are you in the world, my good sir? You're over there. Oh, they're doing a grand job. Look, there's people here looking after you. Right, 8 o'clock. Okay. We spend a lot of money on wages. We're down to 6,000 of the monies. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay, Bert. Oh, Peter Jones is collapsing. He's gone into a coma. Right. Possibly equip him with some life support. That might be quite good, mightn't it? Oh, dear. Okay, yeah. Can we, can we get some life support on that, please? Um... She's having heart failure, right? Do some defibrillation on her, please. Oh, no. Don't lose these people. I don't want to lose them. We can't lose any more people. Okay. Right. You're okay. You're sleeping. Okay, that's fine. I mean, yeah, if you actually leave in the morning, we should get a massive payout from these people because we've done an awful lot of treatments. So the insurance people are going to pay an awful lot of money to us. But okay. Right. So, oh, now you're collapsing. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Septic shock. Um, okay, they'll sort that out. You're not one that we're controlling. You're not one that we're managing. So hopefully, yes, yeah, somebody can actually run and do that. Elizabeth Martinez, I have severe concerns about Elizabeth Martinez. I'm not entirely sure that Elizabeth Martinez is going to pull through with this one. Septic shock. Again. Right. Oh, dear. I mean, if you could just wait an hour and a half if something bad is going to happen to you so we keep our prestige nice and high. It's at 109% right now. We get to midnight with it on 109%. If she could you know, not die until a bit later, 
That would be very good. That'd be great. I don't quite know what that would do to the patient intake and the insurance payments, because that's significantly higher than we've seen. So here we go. We'll find out. So, boop. Goes over midnight. 105% patient intake. 120% insurance payments. Okay. So again, we're going to be a bit poor for a while. Then I think if we do get to the morning with everybody alive. Oh no. <laughs> right. IV infusion for you, Peter Jones. Keep on. So we've got palp ah, palpitations are fading. Okay. Now he's got, he's gone into a coma again. Right. Okay. Um, it, they'll sort that out. They'll, they'll figure that out. Yeah, IV infusion is done. You've gone into a coma for a bit. This is It's not looking good for two of our people, is it? Two of our people. And they're firefighters. We're not going to let the firefighters go. We're going to fight as hard as we can to keep you wonderful people alive. Okay. So hang on. Whereabouts are you? You're just over here in this bed. Elizabeth Martinez. Heart failure again. You are really struggling. I don't know what else we can do. What else can we do? Got all these kind of treatments going on, but I'm not entirely sure what we can do. Because, yeah, it's just it's a constant battle that you're running in. Everyone's running about and saving you, and it's brilliant. Everyone's trying their hardest, but you might just be... No, no, we lost one. Oh, Elizabeth Martinez, no, I didn't want to lose anybody. Okay, okay, that's, that's really rubbish. I didn't want to lose Elizabeth Martinez. We've lost a firefighter, and that makes me very sad. Um... Okay, okay, that's all not ideal. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Martinez. We did try, but I mean, you were in a bad way. You had palpitations, septic shock, two lots of heart failure, two lots of septic shock. You, you did struggle. You did struggle, and it, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good, was it? You were quite badly injured, and I think maybe, maybe it was a bit too much. But okay, we'll send you for an autopsy. Um, I mean, the only good thing about that, I suppose, is that it didn't happen while the event thing was going on. So it counted as though she was cured, even though she wasn't really, because she's now passed away. But, you know, that's the only kind of positive thing that we can take from that. But um, there we go. There we go. Never mind. It's going to um, it's gonna bring that counter back down to zero, isn't it? But, yeah, there we go. Never mind. Never mind. It, it's what happens. It's a hospital. It's one of those things that will happen. I suspect maybe Peter Jones might also... <laughs> Go the same way, possibly, which is a bit sad as well. Okay, get time moving. Let's see if Peter Jones can pull through. I'm sure he can. We believe in you, Peter Jones. We believe in you. Okay, so money not coming in too much overnight, really. Up to eight grand. Peter Jones collapsing again, back into a coma. His third slip into a coma. It's not looking good, Peter Jones. Okay, get to seven o'clock. Pay the night shift down 25 grand get to eight o'clock pay the you not pay get paid by everybody who's uh, stayed and what do we do with you lot like how do we tell you to go home because you're okay you're fine and you're sort of okay uh is there a go home button i don't know how we tell you to go away <laughs> i mean i love you're here i'm very happy you've come to spend time with us but i don't know how to make you go home um, Mark Lopez. Ah, Mark Lopez. It's fine. Whatever the case, it's all okay. Um, hang on a minute. Uh, ah, here we go. Control patient was treated and is now ready to go home. Release the patient from your care. How? How game? How does one do? Ah, hang on. There's a little house button. Okay, send a treated patient home. Okay, that is good. Jennifer Hill, you may go home. Um, okay, Peter Jones. Ah, stabilized and is now being moved to a responsible department. Okay, so he's pulled through. He did pull through. Peter Jones, you've pulled through. Jennifer Miller, you're going home. Richard Davis, you're going home. Jessica Scott, you are going home. Okay, brilliant. Brooke, Brooke Forster is, is collapsing. I'm sure they'll work on that. They'll get that sorted at some point. So yeah, we've got these two. Um, oh, Elizabeth Martinez. Oh, yeah, you passed away. You passed away. So, uh, okay, we'll send your body to funeral services. Have we done the... Have we done the autopsy? I ah, know it's it's underway. It's underway. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, we're doing the autopsy. The autopsy is what we're doing. So there we go. Peter Jones has collapsed. <laughs> ah, deary me, Peter Jones. Okay, right. So we've done the autopsy. They're doing it now, I believe, over there. Uh, we get we get some money from it. Sorry, really, that's not what we do it for, is it? We do it for the sake of things, right? There we go. To, yeah, it's the right thing to do. Um, 
Judy Anderson has had a collapse from exhaustion. That's okay. Somebody will muddle through. Peter Jones has been defibrillated back to life. Again, he's back in intensive care. Right, the autopsy is finished. Elizabeth Martinez will now send you to funeral services. That's okay. Um, so now Peter Jones is under our control. Oh, another event. <laughs> oh my word, the doctor mode is intense. I've only just finished one load of people. Now there's some more people coming in. Um, okay, major storms. Does that count as a natural disaster? I imagine it would. Major storms have swept over the city, causing extensive damage to property and seriously injuring many. Wounded citizens are now being transported to nearby hospitals. <sighs> okay, Joe, you know what? Joe, you know we're going to do it again. Accept and take over all patients. Just, just this second time round, we'll see what we can do. Uh, and there's any... Hang on. Cure patients. And then there's four... How many patients are there? Have we got to cure this many people? Oh my word. <laughs> oh crikeys. There are there are so many patients. There are so many patients. Is she what? Barbara Davis, William King, Linda White and John Thomas. Um, but then all these ones here as well. Oh my goodness me. Right. We might possibly... <laughs> That's going to take forever. We're going to get so many pop-ups. Mark Lopez, it's probably fine. Don't even worry about it. Okay, is anybody even here yet? Okay, a few people are here. Um, Peter Jones, our favourite patient, is collapsing. He's not our favourite patient game, but okay. Um, right, okay. So, we've now got to do all this kind of again. Okay, John Thomas, maybe... A physical examination would not go amiss to figure out exactly what the problem is. Um, okay, so that's you sorted. Just going to wait for these things to pop up and we'll see what we can do. Okay, Barbara Davis. Are you one of these people as well? Um, yes, okay. So you've got, you've got renal laceration from a flood. Okay, <laughs> right you are. Um, you need You need abdominal surgery. Where does that take place? In general surgery. Okay, so yes, have that please. But also, you are going to need emergency care and a blood transfusion. Otherwise, you're going to be in a bit of a bad way. So, okay. Uh, right, Richard Green. You've got a hand contusion or a fracture of the finger. Um, I think maybe a physical examination should be able to work that out. I would like to think that that would make sense. So, okay. So you go for that. I like how these pop up. This is quite good. Okay, you've got something wrong with your arm. Okay, physical examination again. It's Dave. It's Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave, sort out. William King, chest contusion or broken ribs. A physical examination should hopefully help out with that quite a bit. Richard Green. That didn't help. Do differential diagnosis, please. Linda White. Um, you've got something wrong with your spleen or your pancreas. Again, a physical examination is a good thing to start with, I think. Uh, right, John. Something to your spleen or your liver. We will put you over to Regent Nat, who can do some differential diagnosis. So let's get that sorted. Okay. Uh, Judy Thomas. Um, yep, yeah, physical examination, please. Richard Green. Ah, has a hand contusion. Okay, what do we do with that? We put you into emergency. We give you some numbing ointment. And then we give you an SAIDs, whatever they are. So hang on a minute. We give you analgesics for the tenderness. We give you NSAIDs for the inflammation. And then we give you a bandage of hand injury and an ice wrap for the bruise. Okay, so you should be okay. You should be fine. We don't know what's wrong with you. Differential diagnosis, please. Crikey, it's Linda. Okay, Linda. Um, a way head doesn't have differential diagnosis. It's a little bit of an issue, isn't it? Um, okay, can we please move you over to Regent Nat, who can do differential diagnosis? That's going to be really useful. Barbara Adams has got... Th oh, no. We don't know which one it is. We're not sure. Um, okay, x-ray of the upper limb. Let's go for that, shall we? William King. <laughs> this is so many people. This is very silly. Okay, um, broken ribs or a chest contusion. Um, listening isn't going to help, I don't think. We have to get you to have a chest x-ray. 
John Thomas has got a spleen contusion. Okay, general surgery. Hang on. Do blood transfusion, analgesics, then move you over to general surgery, and we'll do emergency care. Okay, so this is this is all good. Judy Thomas, a fracture of the finger or a hand contusion. Differential diagnosis, please. <laughs> Crikey, Judy Thomas um, has a hand contusion. Okay, we can deal with that. So again, that's numbing ointment. So numbing ointment, bandage, ice wrap. Okay, this is fine. Linda King. Oh, Linda King has got many potential things. Okay, do a physical examination, please, Dr. Dave, and then do differential diagnosis. Um, back to Linda White. Linda White's got many things. Um, hang on a minute. Oh, you've done both. You've done the physical exam and differential diagnosis. Okay, crikey. Um, how about for now? We do give them... What have they got? An abdominal injury. So emergency care and an ice wrap wouldn't go amiss because they're, yeah, they're currently a little bit poorly. How can we work out pancreas contusions? How do we... Abdominal palpitation. Is that... Is that going to help? Or is that going to make it worse? Um, or a USG ultrasound. That would that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, do that. Get get one of those done, please. Um, Paul Lopez, are you one of these people here, Paul Lopez? I don't think you are. Yeah, you know, you're not part of an event. There's a little icon I think that appears if you're part of an event. I think we can see that icon when we go to the next person. Yeah, there's like a little sort of thing there. So, um, okay, you've got a chest contusion. That means you need to have a numbing ointment. However, let's deal with all these things first. So emergency care, ice wrap, that thing for your breathing, analgesics, and then numbing ointment. Okay, so that'll be you sorted out. So Linda King should be okay. Got a couple of people treated already, which is quite good. Quite happy about that. Richard Green, hand contusion. Um, oh, the patient waited for you to plan the treatment or send them home. You can go home. I, th I think you're absolutely fine. You can go and pick up what you need from the pharmacy and then you can clear off. And the same for you. Yes. Okay, this is good. We're, we're getting through these people. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. Okay. Rachel Harris had an infectious disease. I assume she's got SARS and all MERS. Or oh, oh, the pneumonic plague. Brilliant. Okay. But because we're so busy down here, she came in while there was an emergency going on. We didn't actually see her in time. Where is she? Where are you, Rachel Harris? Um, you are... You in... In the MRI? Okay. Why are you in the MRI, Rachel Harris? <laughs> why have you been sent... Oh, away her? Doctor away her? Why would you send them there? Um, okay. That's really irritating because we were doing quite well with all that kind of stuff. Uh, Linda King, you can go home. Right, we are working our way through these people, okay. That's looking pretty good. Mary Martin, have we seen you yet? No, I don't think we have. Fingers, okay, right. Um, physical exam, differential diagnosis. That should sort that out. It should all be okay. Um, lab procedure uncovered a new symptom of favourite patient. Forearm contusion. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, you need to have numbing ointments and all the other bits and bobs. So bandages, analgesics, recommendation, ice wrap, numbing ointment. Okay, that'll sort Barbara Adams out. Oh, crikey. Blunt pancreas contusion. That's general surgery, apparently, for an IV nutrition thing. Okay, so good. You can move over there and do that. Mary Martin has a hand contusion. That is all of these things first. And then numbing ointment at the end. This is all fine. Right. I think if we can get through these people, a lot of the people are just needing little bits and bobs. So hopefully a lot of green ticks will appear soon. A few people are in beds. But okay, so John Thomas, spleen contusion is okay. So yeah, emergency care. So you're now going to be sort of hanging around for a bit. You've got fractured ribs. Okay, bad. Generally bad. Um, you need to go to orthopedics. Okay, so go over to orthopedics. Oh, hang on. We need to wait for you. How about we give you some of these things instead then? So emergency care, compression wraps, analgies, ice wrap, that for your breathing problems. Okay, so many things there. But we do need to move you to orthopedics. You're being moved about anyway, I think it says. Um, oh no, hang on. But now we need to move. We need to remember to move William King. But we can't move him right now because he's already being transferred. Right, Mary. 
Uh, hand contusion. You can go home. That's absolutely fine. Uh, right, where's William King? You are over there, Linda White, in that place in general surgery. Just being absolutely fine. This is good. Right, okay, hang on. William King, William King, William King. Can we move you? We still can't. Whereabouts are you, William King? <laughs> Can we just move your department, please? Okay, Kate Davis. Broken arm of some description. Okay, physical exam. That will be useful. Get that done. Um, hang on a minute. Yep, so we still don't know what it is. We're going to move you to Dr. Dave, who can do some differential diagnosis, because he's very good. Peter Jones is having another collapse. <laughs> I kind of forgot you were there, Pete, to be honest. I kind of thought you were okay, but no. Oh, Pete. Pete. No, Peter Jones. It's just terrible. Oh, Peter Jones. I'm so sorry. That's rubbish. Okay. Another death in the hospital. This is this is not looking good, is it? This isn't good at all. Okay. Barbara Davis is okay, though. She's sort of... Uh, she's fine now. Um, right. William King. Can we move you now? Yay, we can move you. Right. Over to orthopedics with you, please. And yeah, they can they can treat you with that. That's okay. They can give you the compression wraps. So you move over there. Barbara Adams, you've been treated. You can clear off. That's wonderful. Oh, Daniel Adams, you've come in. Um, yep, yeah, physical exam. Here we go. <laughs> I, mean, I, I see the advantage of doing this, but it's quite click heavy, isn't it? It's very clicky. Um, Joe you know what? Um, Dr. Hollander, you deal with that. You do some differential diagnosis on that. I can see the advantage of both ways of doing this. Yeah, it makes things it makes life a lot easier and the game run a lot slicker if you just go, yep, yeah, accept them all in and the doctors can deal with it. But you do at least have an element of control over this, which is okay. Um, right, you need an x-ray. That's fine, possibly. Although we don't have that many things. Um, yep, yeah, he's arrived at the place the autopsy is ongoing i believe so as soon as that's done peter jones can then be sent to the funeral thing um okay physical exam differential diagnosis with dave and also ice wraps and analgesics for the hurty stuff yeah i think we'll get this done we'll get this out of the way it might make the video quite a long one but never mind thomas brown's getting grumpy that's okay thomas many more important things are happening you've got forearm contusion and again, that's sort of all this stuff. And then numbing ointment at the end. Okay, so you'll be done. She'll be okay. Uh, Karen's got a hand contusion. Again, that's just the numbing ointment. So yep, yeah, that with that. This is good. This is looking good. Got many ticks. William King has got things to bring his symptoms down. He's okay. Um, Brooke is getting annoyed about stuff. Paul is getting annoyed about stuff. I don't think you're part of the people that we need to care about um okay karen is karen can go home that's fine yep you can clear off home who have we got left there's only two people daniel adams and ah, the autopsy screen hang on a minute hang on a minute over to the uh, funeral services and you know that's that's all very sad um oh botherations okay <laughs> frank doesn't have a bed over in internal medicine. Okay, hang on a minute, Frank. Hang on a second. I just want to get these two people done. Daniel Adams. Do you know what's wrong with Daniel Adams? No. Uh, you're waiting for an x-ray. As is Kate, I think, possibly. Um, no, you've got your arm contoured. You'll be sorted soon. You'll be absolutely fine. Um, okay, well, hang on a minute. Hang on. I think we might need to do another bit of um, a bit of bed borrowing. I suspect maybe, yes. Yeah. So if we can just grab... Uh, can we move? Can we move all these things? Can we just, uh, where is it? Move a room or selected area. Can we just sort of move those items and pick them up and put them over here? That would make life a lot easier. Just pop them over there like that. Not green, game. The items. Not not, not the floor. The items I wanted. Oh, crackies. Hang on a minute. Let me go. <laughs> That's a bit of a bother, isn't it? Hang on a second. Let me go and sort out this silliness. There we go. Back in the proper colours it should be in. I mean, that's a bit silly, isn't it? But never mind. Um, also, yeah, I think it has... That's a bit of a smaller thing there, isn't it? Why is that a bit smaller? Have we got gaps somewhere? That just doesn't look quite right. Um, oh, we haven't got the... Oh, there's not the bed there. Okay, that didn't work at all. Well, next time, don't do that. That was, that was a bit silly. Right, hang on a second. Take that bit out there, because yeah, there's supposed to be a bit of a gap, isn't there? There's supposed to be a wall just there. Move that over there. Move that to there. Pick the bed up and put that there. There. 
that looks a bit better. It looks a bit better like that. It just looks tidier. Uh, we could fit more people in possibly, but I like that. Okay, right, there we go. So we're on 83%. We're waiting to cure two people, Daniel Adams and Kate Davis. Patricia Green's getting impatient. Whatever, Patricia, it's fine. You, you'll be okay. Just please be patient and we'll see you to you soon. Uh, and the same for you as well, Robert Rodriguez. Uh, many things are happening. Many important things. So here we go. We've got eight minutes to deal with these two people. Okay, so Daniel Adams is going to need an x-ray of a lower limb. That's okay. We can sort that out. Thomas Young getting impatient. So yeah, you need to get this sorted. You need to get this x-ray done. Um, are you being done now? Ah, I'm not entirely sure. Brooke Rodriguez, whatever. Brooke, it's fine. So yeah, can we figure out which one of these it is and then get it sorted quickly? If it's a leg contusion, that will make life nice and simple. Right, Kate, you can go home, which I think means we've only got the one person. Yes, we've got Daniel Adams left to sort out. Um, Kate just went past the end of the day shift. We've got $32,000 after the end of the day shift. That's a lot of money, and we're going to get some more money. It's going to come down a bit, of course, because of the whole virusy thing. But never mind. Mark Green's having a bit of a collapse. That's yeah, it's fine. Dave Rodriguez getting impatient. It's again <laughs> Daniel Hill having a collapse. Everything is fine. Everything is all fine. Everybody, don't you worry. Ah, uh, you've got a calf contusion. Okay, so that is numbing ointment again. So bandage, analgesics, recommendations, ice wrap, numbing ointment. So now all we need to do. Is just get you all those things applied to you, all the different, you know, ice wraps and all that kind of stuff, and then that will be success. However, we do need to do that quite quickly. We've got four minutes, 30 seconds left to get that sorted. So if we could apply all these things really quickly, that'd be amazing. Linda Moore's having a bit of a collapse. Everybody will sort that out. We're good at dealing with that kind of thing. You're getting a bit impatient. Again, I think emergency is going to get a bit backed up. Yes. We've done it, everybody. Emergency is going to get backed up because of the amount of emergency people that came in, sort of event people. Um, we completed the event in time. We gained a prestige boost for the day and a money reward. Successful events in a row, too. Money reward, $10,000. Oh, it's beautiful. And you've been treated. We don't necessarily need to worry about you too much anymore. And um, yeah, we're going to get a bonus 10% prestige. So even though we've got the whole epidemic thing, it's still looking pretty good. We've got 46 grand right now at 10 to 11 at night. We normally don't have that amount of money. So we can pay the night shift and then we'll have actually some money to play with tomorrow. That's going to be amazing. And then, yeah, it might be a case of just summoning many events. We might just need to do many different events. Hang on, hang on. What was the thing here? So um, one epidemic event is what we need. That's what we need to do. But yeah, we have completed one accident event. And then, yeah, if we do one epidemic event, that'll uh, sort that out as well with one of their goals. Okay, right. That looks like the way to go, doesn't it? And the only thing is with the epidemic events, we want to trigger those when it's looking relatively quiet in here. Maybe if we've only got one person in. You've got Ebola. You've got SARS. Okay, two things we don't want you to be spreading about as well. Okay. Um, but you know what? I think that's enough for now. I think that's enough for one video. I, I dread to think how long this video is going to be <laughs> with many, many people that we've treated. Two entire events have been handled. But I think it was it was worth doing it that way. It's very click heavy and very sort of intense of how to work out who needs what and when and how. But I think with those events, it works better doing it that way. So we might well see quite a bit of that in the future. But yeah, I think we wrap things up for now whilst things are looking pretty good. Got a nice pile of money. Prestige is sort of looking okay. It's all looking pretty good. So I think, yeah, we'll finish things up for now. Next time, maybe we'll get that little bit over here sorted. So put a bathroom in and then get another blood lab in. I think that could help out quite a bit. That might speed things along over here. Also, I've just noticed there's a bit of wall there. Hang on, to finish things off, let's take out that bit of wall because it doesn't need to be there. There we go, wonderful. That's made moving around the hospital significantly more effective. Right, there we go. With that done, we will wrap things up and we'll come back next time and just see how we get on with many, many more event type things. But yeah, we'll do that when we come back. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Move out of the way, friend. I'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating. <laughs> Kung Fu Croquet.
Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that I stored on the back of my pants. Lovely, there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana mask. <laughs>